agency, Nate. I know that <laughs> as a player, it's a different kind of a hell. What? Did, how did you experience free agency? Because you had the opportunity to go through it a couple of times. Some dudes don't ever uh, throughout the course of their career. And I think people kind of take it for granted that when players get the opportunity to truly test their market value at various points in their career. Right. Well, um, the first time I was able to have an opportunity to test the market, I'm not going to lie, I had mixed feelings, man, um, because I was coming off of our second Super Bowl and it was kind of inevitable, you know, um, even at the beginning of the season, I remember Heinz telling me things like, man, it's going to be so exciting to see you getting a new opportunity, getting a lot of money for your family, you know, like this is a huge opportunity. He even told me, he was like, you better not come back here neither because every day I'm going to knock you upside your head for missing out on that money. So it was like, it was mixed feelings, you know, because I did not want to leave those guys. Like, I knew that the opportunity would be bigger. I knew that there was a lot more money on the table for me and my family. But, you know, that, that family in that locker room with the Steelers was important to me as well. And it was a lot of mixed feelings. Um, It was a lot of happiness, but a lot of sadness. And if I'm honest, uh, <laughs> upon my departure, from the Titans when I had an opportunity to leave, you know, it was, it was similar, you know, um, unfortunately I feel like my state of the, at the, in that team at the time, at the organization, my heart was tied to Nashville. My heart was tied to the Titans, but it was just so much going on behind closed doors that I was just tired of And You know, um, especially, like I said, coming from Pittsburgh, having two Super Bowls in that short amount of time, seeing how that organization was run seeing how those veterans were in that locker room and then just seeing where I was in the sixth year of being in Tennessee, it was just like, it wasn't ideal. So I I was ready to leave in all honesty. I was ready to see what was going to happen. um, The opportunities that arose and ironically enough, it was an an in-division rival um, and it kind of all worked out business wise. And I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, even with me choosing to go to the Texans, you know, that's where my grandmother lives. So my entire life I've been playing football, and, you know, for my last year of my career, she was able to have an opportunity to watch me play every Sunday that we had a home game. So it was special for me. That's that's awesome. But that's something that fans don't, you know, one, they don't have the the insight to, and and some media people as well, depending (laughs) on whether they take the time to actually bother to ask you guys about the things that you prioritize. And, And a lot of times, you know, um, we won't get full transparency from players because it rarely benefits right. them to be honest at the podium. Right. And I'll, I'll ask you some questions about that within the context of Calvin Ridley here in just a second. What, what was the biggest misconception that you felt was out there about you when you departed the Titans? Because like you said, there was a lot of stuff going on behind the right. scenes that didn't come out, uh, that didn't come to light for you know months and, and in some cases years after the fact. What was the biggest misconception that you felt was around you? Um, in all honesty, you know, I look back at the situation book and I don't think there's any misconceptions. Um, I think people had their opinions from their perception of where they were. Um, I think a lot of perceptions were built upon obviously view and vantage points for, for, for people, whether it was media, whether it was fans, you know, I think a lot of people had their speculation, but in all honesty with you, book, I, I really didn't get a lot of backlash, man. I didn't feel a lot of backlash rather, you know, I, I felt nothing but, grateful and gracious people um, within the organization and the fan base, you know, when it was time for me to go. I I wasn't on social media at the time, so mm. they, they might have been ripping me and yeah. doing, you know what I'm saying? But um, in my world, you know, for my immediate, you know, um, surroundings, you know, the, the even I remember to this day, you know, our, our chef there in Nashville, he he reminisces over taco days, just watching me come in and be excited about tacos and making my tacos and him telling me goodbye when it was time for me to leave. It was everybody in the building, you know, for the most part, just it was a somber sorrow of goodbyes, you know. So I, I felt I felt that I was going to be missed for not only the leadership and the things that I provided for the team, but, you know, who I was as a person. You know, I, I'm I'm very humble. I, I love to interact with people. I love to be, befriend people, especially within the organization, within the organization that works for us. Um, those people, custodial staffs, you know, equipment managers, front desk workers, you know, those people were a lot of uh, good friends of mine. I would love going in and chopping it up with them a lot of times and seeing the smiles on their faces. So I, I really didn't receive any any 
you know, backlash, in my opinion, from the people that matter to me the most. And that was the people within the, that worked within the organization and the fan base. You know, um, I do feel like, you know, I won't go into too much detail, but if there was any misconception or, or anything that wires that were crossed, in all honesty, it was it was with the front office and the head coach, mm. you know, um, I think that's where the the reason came for me not retiring in two tone blue. But I also understood the spec um, the situation. There weren't many guys retiring in two tone blue at that uh, at that time. You know, I watched many guys that were legends for that team, which is for my a lot of different teams. You know, um, they don't they don't retire in the jersey that they they spend a lot of their prime time years in, and I understand the business so. I didn't have any hard feelings. I didn't think anyone had any misconceptions about me that I felt was important to me that I need to clear up. Um, but in all honesty, I was just more grateful that I felt the overall consensus thought about me leaving Nashville, no matter who it was, media or fans. They understood what I gave to that team and everything that I poured into that city. Yeah, because you weren't on social media. That's, I mean, that's that's the answer. Like that's <laughs> like Nate. I swear to God, it doesn't matter what you tweet. It doesn't matter how nice you are to people. When the the first response on every tweet for everybody who posts out there is always going to be a bleep hole. It, it doesn't matter who you are. That person is always going to be the worst person. The first person to respond to anybody's tweet always a bleep hole. So it's a good thing that social well, media. I completely understood that. I don't know what it was about my mindset. Obviously, I, I came in the league before social media, but I understood that it could be such a fickle space that I never wanted to get involved with it while I was playing, man. I, I, my ex-wife at the time, she dealt with it tremendously, and she would come home and we would talk about it, you Ugh. know, the fan response for her, with her. But, man, I had to stay off of it. It, it can be incredible at times. That's because that's you're smart. Nate Washington here with us. <laughs> On 104.5 The Zone. So, I, you know, I got mixed results when we when we did the Calvin Ridley press conference last week because he was he was transparent with us. Uh, Nate, you know, he, he was honest about wanting to go back to Jacksonville. And Titans fans don't want to hear that because they hate the Jags. Uh, and and that <laughs> Tennessee gave him a bunch of money. This was Calvin Ridley at his introductory press conference uh, a little more than a week ago. Uh, it's a new start. Um, when... Uh... When I was going, you know, through the process of, you know, trying to evaluate the teams that I could possibly be with, um, I know that I have a certain type of skills, and so I'm not, you know, scared to go with the good or with, you know, who's trying to be good. So um, I think, you know, playing them twice a year, I was watching them and uh, looking at, you know, the things they did have. I know that D Hop's here, and I know that, you know, I want to play with another receiver on the other side that can, you know, help me, you know, do what I do best too. So. I knew that they had that, and I knew they had a really good defense, and you know they were upcoming and stuff. So I, you know, I was looking into it, and you know, I really wanted to honestly be with the Jags, but you know, there was a lot of things that I wasn't, you know, wasn't working out for me, and then I think the Titans had that other side for me, so I chose the Titans, and I, uh, obviously the money was pretty good, so I went with that, and uh, yeah. It never benefits an athlete to be that kind of honest with us, though, Nate, because p fans always blow up in their face about it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I get it. You know, for a lot of these fans, you know, it's their hometown, right? And it comes to hometown, nothing beats your hometown. You know, you, you, you stand on the top, top of a stool and you'll yell at the top of your lungs in defense of your hometown. And they, a lot of fans don't realize that it's a business for us. Like, we love the game. We absolutely love the game. And we love, you know, when we are comfortable in a space that we can call home. Um, it's ironic that he said that because, quick story, that I've never, ever told absolutely anybody, not a soul, but, you know, I ended up signing with the Titans when I left Pittsburgh, but one of my uh, most thought-after suitors was Cincinnati and leaving Pittsburgh. And I literally told my agent at the time, I said, I can't play for Cincinnati because I just could not see myself at the time playing for Pittsburgh. But obviously, you know, you know, it was more money than I had made at the time. But at the same time, you know, like he said, you look at the numbers and it's like, well, <laughs> that's a lot of money. So it makes it more feasible for you to understand that 
I love being here in Jacksonville. I love being here in Florida. I love playing for the Jags. But the better opportunity for me to advance my career and, you know, make something moving forward, not only on the field but off the field for my family, is in Tennessee, and this is the best choice for me. And I understand fans may not want to hear that, you know, but it's just the reality of the situation. You know, you you never want to look at it as, you know, <laughs> having game ties, but it's almost similar for, for, for a lot of fans. You know, it's like – being a part of the gang, you're never gonna go with that rival gang and 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 line up with them and to to fight your old brothers. It, it never go that way. But in a business world, you know, when it comes to advancing your career, taking care of your family, which is what we all do as we're trying to work to make money, um, that's the most important thing. You know, you make the business business uh, business decision and you go from there, man. You give your best. The best thing about it is, you know, you got a hard worker, you know, a guy that football means something to him. It's not going to be just a guy that's coming in to steal a check from you. This obviously, you know, it was a tough decision for him because of the situation and the comf- comfortable um, environment there in Jacksonville. But at the end of the day, you made had a football guy made a business decision, and he's going to be willing to show up and work every day. At NWash85 is where you can follow the real one. Nate Washington here with us on 104.5 The Zone. From a football standpoint, Nate, uh, Hop is a true out, outside X line of scrimmage wide receiver. Ridley's got a, a lot, of, and both of them have versatility to their game. I don't want to. I don't want to pigeonhole Hopkins like that. But how much more can a guy like Ridley benefit from playing alongside a guy like Hopkins, who can play that traditional X role and allow Ridley to work in a couple of different ways across the formation? I'm going to go two ways with this question, Buck. I'm going to first say we will now get what I expected, not only from Hop but from the other side of Hop with a number one receiver. I spoke about last offseason about, you know, hopefully trailing, turning the corner, which is the other part that I'll address in this question. Hopefully trailing, turning the corner, and becoming a true number one receiver on the other end of Hop because I knew Hop would be reliable. I knew football was important for him. I knew he would be there when his number was called. You know, I knew he would make a lot of, you know, spots, big plays for this team that would help them out. But I just knew he was at that point in his career where he wasn't really at that number one receiver stage. I knew that he needed somebody to step into a number one spot for him. So not only does it allow him to now be comfortable in his role and not be pressed to make big plays or or be the first down receiver or the number one guy on the team, but he'll be – I'm expecting Hop to be even better this year. Because now it takes a lot of pressure off of him at this stage in his career. What Calvin is able to do from immediate routes to deeper routes to, you know, even screen game, you know, I think it would be exactly what I was hoping that Hop could have the opportunity to play alongside of on his, unfortunately, on his way out because just real, our father time is undefeated. But on his way out of the league, you know, his last few years in the league, he will have an actual real chance to have some real impact. You know, I'm looking for another 1,000-yard season. I'm looking for some big things, you know. Um, And as I stated with Calvin's ability, I think it will obviously open up a lot of things for Calvin. Um, having a hop on the other side of him. Hop's dependability, his reliability, him being able to get open in zone, him being able to be a tough nose, uh, a football player, will definitely give Calvin something that he hasn't had uh, in a couple years as well. I think he hasn't had a, a, a hop since Julio, in my opinion. Christian Kirk is a great receiver, but he's just not the same type of guy. Um, so in that thing that – All of that tied together and turning this corner into the next part of this question, I'm hoping that this is the year for Traylon Burks. I'm hoping that he benefits the most out of Calvin and Hop. I'm hoping that he plays relaxed. I'm hoping that he finds a way to stay on the field. He has to be healthy. If he's not healthy, nothing else matters. But I truly feel like this is his breakout season. I'm hoping for at least six to 800 yards from the kid. I hope that he shows us football matters. I truly feel like the microscope is on, on him tremendously. 
in my opinion, more than the other two um, because of the trade value in which we gave up to get him. Um, I think this is his best situation. Also, dealing under two veterans that have been through a tremendous career, both on and off the field. You know, even learning from Calvin's situation of what he dealt with a couple years ago with his suspension. I think this will be a huge learning situation for Traylon, and I'm hoping he benefits at the end of it. So, you know, we talk about Calvin, we talk about Hop and his ability, but, you know, tying Traylon into this opportunity and seeing this thing unfold with a passionate Will Levis is going to be amazing for me. It's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to next year, and I, and I think it will benefit all three guys. You're the man, Nate. We appreciate your time. As always, at NWASH85 is where you can follow him on the socials, now that he is on the socials, even though it makes <laughs> makes a lot of sense not to be on the socials. Uh, he's out there keeping it real on a regular basis and kind enough to make some time for us. Always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. Love, but appreciate you, man. That's the man, Nate Washington, with us.